is a look at the top three picks in the draft according to Mel Kuyper's 4.0 mock, which just came out today. Caleb Williams, first overall to the Bears still. Last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels, second to the Commanders. Drake May, third to the Patriots. This will be just the fourth time in the common draft era that three quarterbacks go in the top three picks, and the first since 2021 when Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Trey Lance went top three. Trey Lance, of course, part of an epic pre-draft trade with the Niners moving up to take him. Mel also has three trades in the first two rounds, and here's the first one. The Vikings move up six spots to number five. They take Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. In exchange, the Chargers receive the number 11 and number 23 picks in the draft. They take tackle J.C. Latham and wide receiver Xavier Worthy to address their major draft needs. And they get the Vikings first round pick in 2025. And there he is, the man himself, Mel Kuyper Jr. Matt Miller joins the, the football genius on this set right now. It's just unbelievable. It gets no better, Tiny ladies effect. and gentlemen. It, it is. So, Mel, what was your thinking first behind that trade? Well, first of all, J.J. McCarthy is 14 on the big board, but you think about the Minnesota Vikings, they have 11 and 23. They have the ability to move up and get J.J. McCarthy, who some are sold on, okay? I'd say future franchise quarterback. Why? Because he managed the game. He didn't throw interceptions. When they asked him to make the play, he did. That was under more pressure than most guys were throwing it all over the yard. His margin for error a lot different than a lot of other quarterbacks. So for J.J. McCarthy, the interceptions were memorable, but decision-making overall and that Jim Harbaugh attack was solid. Accuracy as well. He's very athletic. He can beat you with his legs. He made a key play with his legs in that national championship game where he flipped field position. So I think you talk about game manager, everything you want. They gave up a lot. You think they go up there, but they're in a division where they got to keep up, Hannah, with everybody else. Golf, Caleb coming into that division, and certainly Jordan Love emerging. So for, for Minnesota, it's, it's almost a desperation move. you got to make a move to get the quarterback. Getting 11 and 23 gives you the ability to jump up there to five and get them. Yeah, I know Mel doesn't like to do trades in his mock drafts, but this trade is fantastic, Kuiper. And it's great for J.J. McCarthy. It's great for the Minnesota Vikings. Like you said, is he rated the number five overall player in this year's draft? No, but we know that teams are going to overpay for the quarterback position. And Minnesota has set the table perfectly for a young quarterback to come in and succeed. We talk about the best receiver in football. And we have a great young receiver opposite him in Jordan Addison. You've got bookend offensive tackles, a great tight end in TJ Hawkinson. Oh, and they added Aaron Jones from within the division at tailback. This offense is ready for a young quarterback to come in and have that success because the infrastructure that they built around him. You have a former quarterback and a head coach, Kevin O'Connell. You have a great offensive coordinator, Wes Phillips. This is the ideal situation where a quarterback could come in and play, I think, right away, even though they added Sam Darnold in free agency. I still think this is a great spot for J.J., given his experience in that Michigan system, guys, to come in and be an impact player right out of the gate. We know you... that structure, Go ahead, by Lewis. and large, goes, goes, goes a long way, Hannah. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, we, look, we know that structure, by and large, goes a large way towards uh, determining success and failure at quarterback. And I think the structure in Minnesota, in particular the quarterback structure between Kevin O'Connell, between Josh McCown, who is now up there, the, you know, in talking to Josh McCown, the answers that they have within the overall structure of this offense to help quarterbacks play at a high level, help them play with a level of confidence, knowing that when they get under center, they have answers for everything that a defense is going to throw at them, whether that be in the pass game or the run game, is something that every young quarterback can stand to benefit from. And then on top of it, when you have someone, you know, like a Sam Darnold, who is as well-traveled as he is, has played in the various systems that he has played in, coming over from San Francisco, that runs a system very similar to what they are going to run out the, you know, there in Minnesota, it's going to help speed up a guy like J.J. McCarthy's development if, in fact, they wind up trading up and drafting him. So I think overall, for a young guy like this, regardless of what you think he has done or hasn't done in college, right. the whole quarterback evaluation you know, paradigm is subjective anyway. I think this is one of those places where this young man can come and absolutely blow everyone away with the way in which he can advance quickly in his maturation process and in his developmental process and wind up exceeding everyone's expectations based on what people think he is and because of what he did at Michigan, which is limited compared to some of the other quarterbacks. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exceptional landing spot. I mean, it really does feel like it would be a terrific spot for any of these young quarterbacks, probably part of the reason why Minnesota 
Minnesota may feel emboldened to make this move up. And, you know, the, the draft, the responsibility of the NFL teams is to take the sample size, no matter how small or large of these prospects, whether it's more stars than any other quarterback in the history of the FBS, like Bo Nix, or whether it's a player in J.J. McCarthy, who has two full seasons as a starter, and to project what that might look like at the NFL level. And I'm sure there are probably fans that are out there saying right now, this is the typical quarterback inflation that has taken place right now. I would just say this, in my conversations with people around the league, and you're never going to speak to every evaluator from every team, but I get the general sense that J.J. McCarthy is not viewed as a consolation prize. 